Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here. Today, I'm going to be making a video on why I think Sadiq Charles can be a star left tackle for us in the future. I'm also going to be showing you guys some insane off-season workout videos that he has done by himself and with a couple other Washington offensive tackles like Morgan Moses. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be guy I'm going to give you guys an update on if the season will start on time and how training camp will look. If you guys are new, subscribe for Redskins and NFL content. So, let's get right into the video. As you guys all know, Washington selected Sadiq Charles in the fourth round with the 108th selection in the draft after we traded away Trent Williams. And he's seen as a developmental player. A lot of people thought he was going to go earlier in the draft, but he slipped due to off-the-field issues, suspension issues at LSU, which shouldn't be much of a problem now because of the new CBA, but it still is a little bit of a red flag. But he was really first to second round talent, but he slipped and we got him. And he's going to have a real, real chance of being a starting tackle for us because Jerron Christian is he he's a developmental player still and he really hasn't developed into what we thought he could be so unless he he developed a lot this offseason he probably will not be the starter and Cornelius Lucas is decent but I do think Sadiq Charles could beat him out to be the starting left tackle so he could be getting a lot of reps and a lot of reps quickly but the this shortened offseason does not help him because there is no preseason to give him some more reps and there is a condensed offseason. There is no, obviously, rookie minicamp and OTA, so that will hurt him. But he has been putting in a lot of work this offseason, and I think he can be a solid tackle for us in the future. So I'm going to be giving you guys, I'm going to show you guys the offseason workout videos. You guys will be able to watch that. And when we come back, we'll talk about why I think he can be a Pro Bowl left tackle for us in the future. And I'll give you guys some facts you might have not known about him. So let's get into the workout videos. So as you guys saw there from those Austin workout videos, he's been working out by himself, but also with a couple Washington offensive tackles like Morgan Moses' team on Paris. So it's pretty good that he's getting help from NFL talent. And yeah, so now let's get into why I think he can be a star in the NFL for a very long time. So first off, you guys all know he's 21 years old, played at LSU. He's about six foot four and 320 pounds. So he's at a pretty good weight. A lot of people think that he was a little bit too small coming into the draft. He, he should have been a little bit uh, bigger weight wise, height wise. He's fine. Obviously, six four is about average for a tackle, uh, but he needs to be a little bit bigger. That's what a lot of them say. And but his feet are really quick, and that actually is because he played soccer in high school and was a really good goalie, and he says that his footwork is better because of that. So that's really good to know. He has a soccer background. And yeah, he's pretty good uh, offensive tackle body. And now let's go on to some of his uh, career accolades and what he's done at LSU, what position he's played. So he played in 32 games with 28 starts in his three uh, years at LSU. Most of the time was at left tackle, but he did play right tackle and right guard. So that is good news to see that he has some versatility. So if someone gets hurt, let's say this year he starts as a backup and Brandon Scher from Morgan Moses gets hurt, he's going to be able to go in there and play a little bit. And even if they aren't hurt, there's going to be some situations where he might be able to go in at those positions. And again, Ron Rivera loves versatility. So it's good to see that he can do that. He's started 26 games at left tackle one at right tackle and right guard. So 
uh, pretty good, and he's also played a couple other games at right guard and right tackle. And I think he has a serious chance of starting this year at left tackle. Like I said earlier, the players at our left tackle spot, like Cornelius Lucas, uh, Jerron Christian, and a couple others, there's nothing special about them. Cornelius Lucas, I, he's an oak. Okay, he's if he ends up being our starting left tackle, I'm okay with that. He's not bad. He'll hold it down for you. But Sadiq Charles has really, really good potential. He has really quick feet, and he's very, very athletic. He's really quick for an offensive tackle. I think his 40-yard dash time was in the 84th percentile. He's a quick guy, pretty quick feet, so that's good about him. He does need to strengthen his core a little bit, but that's almost all offensive tackles. Coming out of the draft, they need to get a little bit stronger and a little bit bigger, and I think he's done this uh, offseason. He's done that, and I think he's going to be ready this year for the NFL but again, having a shortened offseason is not going to help him. So it might be maybe he gets in a few re a few snaps every game at left tackle, give Cornelius Lucas a break, or if Cornelius Lucas is hurt. And then maybe by week four, week five, after he's getting a lot of reps in practice, he can eventually be the starter. Because I think with a full offseason, he definitely could have been the starter right off jump. But now because of no training camp, or no mini camp, no OTAs, and no preseason, it's going to be a lot harder for these younger players to develop. But I think he has really, really good potential. A lot of people said he was going to go in the first or second round, if not for his off-the-field issues, which were um, some, he had some drug problems, and that's why he got suspended. But now, because of the new CBA, it won't be as big of an issue. And as long as Ron Rivera and all these leaders that we have in Washington can get him together. I think this is a home run pick. We'll see how he does. He has pretty good hands uh, and overall a very good player. I think he might be one of the biggest steals of the draft for us this year. I think we have a, a bunch of candidates that could be steals of the draft. I think him, also Antonio Gandy Golden, but I'm really, really excited to see what he can do for us this year. And what he can do for us in the future. And I think it was Chase Young who said he was Sadiq Charles was the hardest player he had to go up against in college, which is pretty good because they're going to be able to go up against each other every day in practice. And that's another reason why I think he's going to be a star because he's going to have though that really good competition to go up against in practice. A lot of offensive tackles at least good ones love when they have good competition and practice because it gets him be them better and he's going to have great competition. He's either going to be blocking against Montez Sweat or uh, Kerrigan or Chase Young. So all of those guys have been, Kerrigan's been elite and he's still pretty good and Montez Sweat and Chase Young are on their way to being pro bowlers. So he's going to be going up against very, very good competition in practice every day which is also going to get him better. And we also have a pretty good, well-respected offensive line coach. I think his name is John Matzo or something like that. And he's pretty well-respected, so I'm excited to see that. So now on to just quick training camp and season news overall. So really good news. The season will start on time. Training camp will start on time. So the NFL clubs and the NFL PA uh, approved an agreement that Broadly resolves all outstanding issues relating to the opening of training camps and start of the 2020 season. Training camps will begin as scheduled and same with the uh, beginning of the season, which is really good. Here is some other very, very um, important news. So details on two types of opt-outs. So the opt-outs, whenever this deal gets signed, which is really important because when this deal gets signed, seven days later is the deadline to opt out of the season. So we got to keep an eye on uh, that we have a lot of young players, so I don't think it's going to be a big issue. I think it's going to be more older players like veterans that might opt out, but keep your eye out on that. So high risk players get three hundred fifty dollars um, with no uh, offset and then voluntary get one hundred fifty thousand dollars next year. So um, it's good news to see that they got this done. Training camp's going to start on time, which is also very good news and starting the 28th they're going to get tested a couple days and then after that I think August 1st is when their conditioning starts so it's still going to be a while but it's good news that they're uh, they got this done and then also real quick another update roster sizes uh teams can reduce rosters to 80 right now but 
at some point, August 16th, they're going to have to be at 80. Usually, it's right before the season starts, right after the last preseason game. They get down from 90 to 53, but now they got got to get down to 80 just because, obviously, the pandemic, they can't get too many people in the room at the same time. So that's also going to be important. I do believe we have about 80 something players right now so we're gonna have to cut that down and uh release a few players it might be someone like jonathan johnson or something like that or it could be a veteran that we didn't think was going to make the team anyways so i hope you guys enjoy this video i really am excited to see what sadiq charles can do in this league if you guys enjoyed smash that like button subscribe if you're new and peace